Welcome to LifeSpring Church's YouTube channel. We hope you enjoy Sunday's message. To find out more about us, please head to www.lifespringchurch.org.uk. From your left is Luke. He's the second child. Next to him is Sarah. Next to Sarah is Esther. And then Hannah. Hannah's the youngest. Sarah's the oldest. They're all connected with King's Church International in, in Windsor. Esther, the third one along from the left or second from the right, she is actually involved in event management. She looks after the UK G12 conference. She's the event manager for that. And last year, Sarah, next to her, she was the program manager for the conference. Luke, some of you may have met, he was involved in Kids Club a few years ago in Windsor, and some of you came across to find out how to run Kids Club. Well, Luke was involved with that, he, he was helping lead that. He's now a teacher, and Hannah on the other end is a teacher. Hannah is involved in the evening service in King's Church International in Windsor, and she's part of the, uh, sort of, uh, the 12, senior 12 for that service. So that is my family. I'm going to be sharing today about a year of seeing and a year of surprise. Some of this I shared at the week or the fortnight of um, prayer and preparation. If you've got your Bibles or got your um, iPhone and uh, if you want to turn to Mark chapter 3, and I've come up here without my glasses, so I do need my glasses, so I'm quickly going to get my glasses. They're in my coat. <laughs> we should always be prepared, and I wasn't prepared for that. Sorry about that. Mark chapter 3. It says this, Another time Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of, them look, some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus answered them, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. Jesus looked at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. I want to just say thank you to Pastor Neville and to Pastor Jackie, I want to say thank you for their friendship and thank you for their support. 16 years ago, I resigned from leadership of King's Church in Reading. During that time, I had visit from three church leaders in Reading. One came to me to find out a bit more details about why I had to resign. Another came to me to bring me encouragement and uh, Neville came to me. Neville came and brought me encouragement, but Neville said something to me that really has stuck in my spirit since that time. And it's only been uh, Pastor Neville that actually during the whole of the 16 years has had an open door to me. And on a regular time, I uh, used to go and visit Neville and we used to have coffee together and we used to chat together. But one thing Neville said to me that's really stuck in my mind, he said this, how can I learn from your mistake so I don't make the same mistake? And I thought that is a man of humility. He recognized what I'd, I had done and he also recognized that he needed to be in the position where he didn't make the same mistake. And during our friendship over the years, Neville has really encouraged me. Neville encouraged me to believe that there will come a day again when I will be able to fulfill the ministry that God had called me to. Today is part of that restoration. And I thank God for Neville and thank God for his support. I believe this is going to be a year of seeing. We're going to see things, I believe, this year that we haven't seen before. 
In Acts chapter 3, there's a lovely story of a man who went every day, in fact, he was taken every day to, to sit by the gate beautiful. And his job was to go and beg from the people that came to, to worship and to pray. And while he was there, while he was sat there, along came Peter and John. And they saw the man and they said to the man, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have we're going to give to you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And he got up, he was healed, he was completely healed, the Bible says. And that word completely is there. He wasn't just healed, the Bible says he was completely healed. Now we don't know the man's name, but we do know something about him. That man was lame from birth. Not only was he lame from birth, but he was over 40 years old. And every day he had gone there, every day he had gone begging, and every day he was reaching out to people. You may be here this morning, and you may be in a situation where you have got something that has been there from your birth. Jesus can heal people who've got things from their birth. This man, he was lame from his birth. Something else, he was over 40 years old. And if you're here today and you're over 40 years old and you've got something that you need healing for, believe God that he can heal you. Believe God that he will reach out to you. Another story. This time the story comes from Matthew chapter 5. Sorry, Matthew chapter 9 and Mark 5. It's the story of the lady who was had the problem, problem of being bleeding for 12 years. And she said to herself, if I can just touch the cloak of Jesus, I will be healed. She had that sort of faith. And we know that she reached out, touched the cloak of Jesus, and she was healed. And if you're here today, and you've had something for 12 years, or more than 12 years, Believe God can bring healing to you. Become that, that lady who reached out to Jesus. And as she reached out to Jesus, Jesus met her and healed her. But there's two lovely things about both of those stories. The first story in Acts chapter 3. When that person was healed, suddenly the, new, the noise about that person being healed went all around the area. And what happened? People were amazed. People were astonished. They were just excited about what they had seen. I believe this year we're going to see the power of a testimony. When God impacts a person's life in such a way that the news of what God has done was spread. And people will be amazed. People will be astonished at what God has done. What about the other lady? What, sorry, what about the lady who had been bleeding for 12 years? Well, what did she do? She reached out to touch the cloak of Jesus and she was healed. A few chapters later, in Matthew chapter 14 and Mark ch chapter 6, it says this, As, after Jesus has crossed over the lake, Suddenly, all the people from the village gathered together to all the sick people from the villages, from the countryside, got them all together because they had recognized Jesus. And they wanted to bring them to Jesus. And what does it say? They begged him, begged Jesus, to allow him to touch the cloak so that they would be healed. And the Bible says, all that touched the cloak of Jesus were healed. They had heard about this lady who'd been bleeding for 12 years. They had heard. How did she get her healing? She got her healing this way. She reached out, touched the cloak of Jesus, and she was healed. Suddenly people realized, that's what I need to do. If I want healing, I need to reach out to Jesus. I need to touch his cloak and I will be healed. That's the power of a testimony. And I believe this year we're going to see people healed. And as people hear about the story of their healing, they too will want to reach out to Jesus. 
That's the power of a testimony. And if you're here this morning, and if you've had something from birth, or if you're over 40 years old, or if you've got something you've had for 12 years, at the end of the service, come forward for prayer. And believe that the woman, that as you reach out to Jesus, Jesus will heal you. Or be like the, the man who's lame. Allow someone to come and pray for you. Allow someone to reach out to you so that you can be healed. In this story I've just read was a man that, uh, well, he was in this situation where he was having a, a withered hand. Jesus turns up in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. In the synagogue at that time, there were people there who just didn't want Jesus to do anything. They certainly didn't want Jesus to heal. And Jesus describes that all the, 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 the story shows that those people had stubborn hearts. That was their condition. And their stubbornness was trying to stop Jesus from doing something. But it didn't stop Jesus from doing something because he called the man forward and he said to the man, stand up in front of everyone stretch out your hand and immediately the person stood up in front of everyone stretched out his hand he was healed in fact it says um, he was completely restored that was what happened to him I wonder sometimes when we're in church when God starts to do things and there sort of rises inside us a bit of stubbornness thinking Lord, really don't just turn up today because I might miss the football this afternoon. Or I've got people come to lunch and I'm not really prepared for them. And we get a bit of resistance inside us thinking, oh, I hope this service does finish by quarter to twelve. I hope things are over so I can get back in time. Are we in the position where we so want Jesus to turn up that we're willing to, just to remain in his presence. Because when the presence of Jesus comes, things change. Jesus turned up in the synagogue. Things change. I wonder how many people came the following week just to see if Jesus was there, just because they, need, because they needed a healing. I wonder if the story went around and they wanted to be in the same place where Jesus was so that Jesus could touch them. I believe as the presence of God comes amongst us, we, the presence of God will be so real that other people will want to come along and be in that presence so that Jesus can touch them. But if there's stubbornness in our hearts, we might miss out. We need to lay aside that stubbornness. And I believe during this year we will see things that we haven't seen before. But we've got to be willing to put ourselves out. We've got to be willing, like that man, we've got to be willing to step out. We've got to be willing to allow Jesus to meet with us. Seeing complete restoration. Joel chapter 2, verse 25, it talks about the year that the locusts had eaten. Well, the locusts had eaten, and, and the years that had received the devastation were going to be restored. It says they will be restored the years that the locusts had eaten. I heard a preacher say this, Chuck Pierce from the States. He said this, it takes 17 years for complete restoration. When I heard that, I received so much encouragement. 16 years since I resigned from church leadership. I'm believing for God for complete restoration. Last Sunday, Pastor Neville stood up and said, 17 years ago, he was given a vision from God. That vision was to see people being saved, to reach out to the lost. That vision was to see discipleship, people being discipled. That vision was to see leaders being released. 
Year 17, it's 17 years. I believe for Pastor Neville, this is going to be the year where he will see complete restoration of that vision. He will see complete restoration, so much so it will impact this church by people being saved, impact this church by people being discipled, impact this church by re- leaders being released. This is a year, I believe, where we're going to see complete restoration. And you may be sitting there this morning and think, yeah, I want restoration in that area. I need God to move in that part of my life. I want God to do that. I've been longing for God to move in that way. Believe God for your complete restoration. It doesn't have to take 17 years. It could be 17 seconds. It could be 17 months. It could be you know, 17 years. I'm 17 years or 17 days. It could be a period of time that God meets with you. But be in the place where you believe that this can be the time when you will see complete restoration. During the prayer and preparation week, we heard a lot about Joshua. And Joshua was told one by God one day to go into the camp, say to the camp, get yourself ready because it's time for you to cross over the Jordan and move in to the new phase of their lives. They had to sanctify themselves. They had to set themselves apart for God. They had to present themselves right with God so they can see God work in their situation. Now the children of Israel could have easily said, well, we don't want to move. We're camped here by the Jordan. It's great. Where they were was better than where they had been. Yeah, they had been in Egypt. They had been in slavery. They've come out of that. Now they're camped by the Jordan. And they could have easily said, this is great, we're going to stay here. For them to really move into what God had for them, they had to step out and move on. And for some of us, sometimes we get so used to seeing God perhaps bless our worship, have great words, that we get to the point where we say, I want to just camp here. I like this. This is better than what I used to have. But God has got so much more for all of us. I believe there, there, are, there are times when God will want to really come amongst us with his presence. When Jesus will really just turn up here. Just like he turned up in the synagogue and healed the man with the withered hand. The story of the man with the withered hand really speaks to me about us within the body of Christ. You know, that withered hand was joined to the body, but it wasn't much use to the body. Didn't have very much beauty. Didn't, wasn't really able to be used. Didn't have much of a function or usefulness. But when Jesus touched that withered hand, suddenly it was able to be used. It became useful. There was a beauty about it again. For us, could we be described as someone who's joined to the body of Christ, part of the church, but we're not of much use? We're living in a day and age, I believe, when God doesn't want passengers within his church. God wants us all to be able to use the gifts and the abilities that God has given to us. To know our purpose, to know our calling. You know, the week of prayer and preparation was all about discovering God's purpose. And I believe God wants that for us. Where we discover our purpose, where we function as God wants us to function, where we're used in the way that God wants us to use. And I believe God is wanting to change us so that he can bring a change into the church so that that change will then impact the nation. God wants to change us to change within the church so that we can really impact Reading in such a way that Reading will see a complete change. Are you in a place where you need to be rightly connected to the church, where you become useful where you use the gifts and abilities that God has given to you. Turn with me to John chapter 19 and verse 
20. Sorry, John 20 in verse 19, rather. Just going to read a few verses there. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands inside. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Miss out uh, putting in this. Jesus turned up and does the unexpected thing. Also, this will become a year of surprise for us. During this year, I believe for some of us, we're going to see surprises to the answers of our prayers. Yeah. Some of you have been praying over situations for a number of months, maybe a number of years. You've been calling out for God for answers. I believe this is going to be a year where you're going to start to see some of those answers. Answers to your prayers. Believe it. Believe it. Yeah. A very good friend of mine was going to come today, but for at the last moment he wasn't able to come. His name's Mark. Mark used to be, a, well, he, he's a very mad Chelsea supporter, and I, I forgive him for that, but uh, he really loves Chelsea. And he was... In the past, when he was 15, 16, part of Chelsea Headhunters, he was involved in football violence, so much so that he finished up in prison. While he was there in prison, he was just thinking about his life. Eventually he came out of prison, and there came a day when he, he decided to, to go on to church. God met with him in a very powerful way. Now he just shares his testimony of all over the place. But part of his testimony is this. I'm a Christian today because of the prayers of Mummy Alloway. That was his mum's name. And every day, while he was away from God, while he was getting involved in violence, while he was in prison, his mum just regularly prayed for him and prayed for him until there came a time when he met with Jesus and Jesus met with him. Believe God will answer your prayers. Every one of us, I'm sure, have got things we're crying out to God for. We just long for God to move in the situation. It could be a healing that we long to see in our family. could be a member of our family we long to see saved. Could be a could be a prodigal who's just gone off, just wandered away. Believe this will be the year when that prodigal will come back. Believe this will be the year when your whole household will be saved. Just like the jailer. His whole household was saved, not just one or two. The whole lot got saved. Believe that. Believe that God hears your prayers and believe that God will answer your prayers. Some of you are crying out for finances in your prayers. Believe this is going to be a time where you're going to have supernatural surprises how God answers your prayers. Because I believe we are going to see God do some surprising things and especially we're going to see God do some supernatural things. I love the story in Acts chapter 12, verse 5. It talks about the church coming together. They came together for one reason. Peter was locked away in prison. And they prayed as a church, Lord, release Peter. Immediately he was released. Release. And they were surprised at the answer that they got. It was so quick. The reason why they received a quick answer was because the supernatural took place. An angel came, released Peter from prison, and told him to get up and go. And I believe we're going to see that. As we cry to God, God is going to bring the supernatural into place so that we can see people get from the prison into a place where they're right before God. Get from the place where we're in debt to a place where we, our finances are okay. A year where the supernatural is going to take place. Here in this story I've just read, Jesus turns up suddenly, unannounced and unexpected. He turned up 
to meet with his disciples. There, the disciples were all together. The position of the disciples were that they were locked away because of fear. Why were they afraid? Suddenly they were fearing the Jews. Why were they fearing the Jews? Because they thought the same thing that happened to Jesus was going to happen to them. Not only were they full of fear, but they were full of disappointment. Suddenly their, their leader, the one they put their trust in, the one they were following, suddenly he had been taken away from them. Not only were they full of disappointment, but I believe they were also full of dis disappointment in themselves. Because at that last moment before Jesus was crucified, all of them left Jesus. They let their leader down. Not only did they feel that their leader had let them down because he didn't fulfill what he had said to them, but they let their leader down. And for us, you know, as we come to church Sunday by Sunday, we can be there in church and we can be very similar to those disciples. We may be here this morning. We may be full of fear. There may be things in our lives that we're scared about. We haven't broken through on. We may have fear over our finances. We may have fear over the health of a member of our family. We may have fear over our job situation. We could be full of fear. We may be in a situation where we're full of disappointment, disappointing ourselves because we have let someone down. You know, for, for 16 years, as I look back over what took place in my life, I immediately get the feelings of guilt and shame. Jesus has dealt with that for me, and I praise God for that. But so often people live in that position where they're full of guilt, they're full of shame. And they want a release. Full of rejection. You know, many of us are in situations where during our life we have times when we get rejected. For some people here this morning, your rejection may have come through your parents. Or your rejection may come through your children. Your rejection may come through a partner. You feel rejected. What happened in this story? When Jesus turned up, the situation changed. You know, Jesus turns up and his, his presence changed the whole situation. Immediately Jesus came and said, peace be with you. He knows what we immediately need. Whatever our situation is like this morning, he knows how he can get to the issues in our lives. And for the disciples, what they needed at that point in time, immediately they needed peace. So Jesus comes to them and says, peace I give to you. And you may be in the situation this morning, you're stressed out, you're depressed, you're low, you're feeling down, and you may need to have Jesus just come to you and bring to you his peace. But they, Jesus did something else. He knew the state of the disciples. He knew that they were in that position feeling, my life is not worth very much because I couldn't even follow my leader. I let him down. Or they, they were thinking, there's no point carrying on. And Jesus turns up in that situation and what Jesus did to do he just showed him his hands and his eyes. First of all, that was a confirmation to him that it was really Jesus. Because when they saw the nail prints in his hands and saw where the spear went in his side, they immediately knew it was Jesus. But also by that act of showing them his hands and his eyes, Jesus was saying to them, this is how much I love you. This is how much you mean to me. This is what you mean to me. I love you this much. Perhaps that needs to be something you hear this morning. Because you may be in a situation where you feel unloved. No one really cares about you. This person doesn't love me anymore. Jesus does. And Jesus will say to you, this is how much you mean to me. 
and he immediately gave to the disciples value again. He gave them a purpose. He gave them something to hope for. Their situation completely changed when Jesus turned up. Immediately what happened to disciples? It says they were filled with overjoy when they saw the Lord. Yeah, to me the overjoy is just like the feelings a person has when they see that baby for the very first time. In fact, it says of Jesus in the Christmas story that angels declared, Behold, we give you good news of great joy. You know, the birth of Jesus was great joy. And for many people, when, when the baby is born, there's such a joy, there's an excitement, they are overjoyed. Just feel I will sh- need to share this. If you're here this morning and you're just longing for a child and you haven't had that overjoy of receiving a baby, can I pray for you at the end? Yeah, you know, I just have had the joy of praying for people who need to have children and that God has met with them. In one situation, God met with them in such a great way they had twins. Yeah. I'd love to be able to pray for you at the end. If you're in a situation where you're just longing to have a baby and for different reasons you're unable to have a baby, come and see me at the end. But with, in this story, the disciples were overjoyed. Why? Because they saw the Lord. Yeah, and that should be us as we meet together Sunday by Sunday. This place should be a house of joy. Why? Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of joy. You know, Pastor Neville spoke on that. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This place should be a place of joy. Jesus says in Luke chapter 19, he went around full of joy through the Holy Spirit. If Jesus touches our lives, the outcoming of that, or the outworking of that should be that we should be one of the most joyful people around. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of joy couple more things Jesus gave them a a fresh purpose he restored their joy he dealt with their fear he gave them this purpose as the father has sent me I'm sending you how was Jesus sent Jesus sent to be the savior of the world he came with salvation yeah Jesus was sent to be the light of the world he came as light into the darkness as the Father has sent Jesus, so he sends us to bring the good news of salvation, to be lights to the world that is in darkness. Jesus came to release the captives, to open the eyes of the blind, to set people free. We go with that message, that message of hope to people. We carry the message of hope. Jesus came with a message of hope. We carry that message of hope. And that's our purpose. Jesus wants to impact us so that we can go with that message. And that's why Jesus breathed on, to, on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Put up some discussions for you in your life group. Think about some of these things. Think about some of these areas in your life. What areas in my life needs to change? What things in my life am I looking for? Complete restoration. And are there examples that you can share with other people in the group where you have seen restoration? You may be in a situation though this morning where as I finish, you, you recognize what you need is God to breathe upon you, to come upon you, and to impact you with his Holy Spirit. You know, I've put down some prayers that we could pray for our life groups, for each other. You know, pray that the church will see a restoration of the Ephesians 4 ministries. You know, Ephesians 4 ministries, the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, they weren't in the Bible just as a title. They were in the Word of God for function. 
God gave those ministry gifts so the body can be built up, so the body can be equipped, so the church can be what the church was meant to be. So often those ministry gifts have been just left as a title. I'm an apostle, I'm this, I'm that. God gave those ministry gifts so the church truly can be restored into what God intended the church to be. Also, he's given to us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the, you know, the gifts of healing. So that if we want to become like Peter and John, we need gifts of healing. And we need to cry out to God, Lord, use us for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need words of knowledge. We need to rediscover the importance of speaking in tongues. We need to rediscover that. God has given those to us so that we can become useful. So we're not like a shriveled hand. We've got a purpose. We can be used. We can be a blessing. We say every Sunday, I'm blessed so that I can bless. And that's what God's heart for us all. He wants to bless us so that we can bless others. Allow God to touch you this morning with a fresh filling of his Holy Spirit. I believe God wants to breathe upon you. And I believe we will know times during this year when the presence of God is so thick amongst us that all we can do is just be lost in love and amazement how great our God is. David brought together an army of people. It says of David's army in 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and chapter, chapter 13, it says of David's army, David's army was made up of, of people who served him with undivided loyalty and they knew how to celebrate God with all their might. And they, were, they became known as a great and mighty army. I'm sure we've got the desire that Lifespring becomes a great and mighty church. But to be a great and mighty church, it has to be made up of individuals, people like you and people like me, who serve God with an undivided loyalty, who know what it is to celebrate God with all of our might. Just like Pastor Neville was encouraging us earlier on this morning and uh, as Penny encourages us every time when she leads to worship God with all of our might. I believe that's God's heart for us. We hope you enjoyed Sunday's message as much as we did. To find out more about Lifespring Church, head to www.lifespringchurch.org.uk.